Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind the scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. We continue our discussion with Matt von Conrad by exploring the biological and environmental significance of early land plants, such as mosses and liverworts. My name is Matt von Conrad and I am a collections manager and adjunct curator in bryophytes or early land plants at the Field Museum. So it turns out that these bryophytes, because they're so small and generally quite compact, scientists use them to assess changes in the environment. Because they are so small, they respond rapidly to environmental change. Unlike, for instance, uh, larger plants such as trees or even animals, because they can withstand, to a certain degree, some changes in the environment. We've all heard of catastrophic events where there's been some environmental pollution and humans have suffered from cancer several years or perhaps even decades after the initial event. Well, it turns out that these bryophytes, because they respond rapidly to environmental change, scientists can use them to assess changes in the atmosphere. And these days, bryophytes are even being used to look at changes in the climate. Because people have been collecting these plants for literally hundreds of years now, we can actually study the distribution over time and then we could use that information as one line of evidence to help us understand historical changes in the climate with the changes in the plant distribution. Atmospheric or pollution scientists have used these plants in all sorts of atmospheric pollution experiments where they have translocated these plants into pollution hotspots and they've been able to investigate and monitor these plants to see how they've how they've responded to this translocation and measure the heavy metals that they have absorbed. So they can be used as indicators of environmental change or atmospheric pollutants. 